Most applications make asynchronous calls where workloads are shifted onto different threads. But one problem for profiling is that the call stack of a performance bottleneck only shows the last thread boundary and that is often not helpful enough for finding the cause of the problem. This is especially true for reactive programming and so I've prepared a small sample project with Spring WebFlux that outputs all permutations of a specified word. This is the entire Spring Boot application in a single file. At the top there is the application class and the main method. Below that is the controller that takes the second URL segment as an input word and outputs its permutations as a flow of lines. The idea of reactive data streams is that permutations are only calculated as fast as the browser can read the data and no thread is blocked during a long-running request. The permute method produces a flow of permutations. I have wrapped that into a delayed cold stream to make sure that the thread that first handles the request does not do any actual work. Let's profile this application. The CPU call tree view is where we are going to analyze the requests. By default, no CPU data is recorded. Let's make a warm-up request from the browser and see what the output looks like. These are all the permutations of the word test. Now we switch on CPU recording and repeat the same request by reloading the page. There are two different entry points. One belongs to the Netty request handler, the other is from the executor service that processes the reactive stream. The request handler thread includes a URL splitting node provided by JProfiler's Netty probe. And below that, the only thing that we can see is the initialization of a cold stream. The permute method is not called here. In the executor service node, we can see how permutations are constructed. The mechanics of the reactive streams framework is not visible because we only profile our own packages. This default configuration is set by the JProfiler IntelliJ IDEA plugin, but you can change profiled packages at any time in the session settings. Adding packages from the reactive framework would lead to horrendously deep stack traces though. The main problem now is that we would like a call tree that places the handling of the actual workload below the request and see the complete stack traces from the top to performance bottlenecks. The first thing we need to do is to enable executor tracking. Executor tracking links the submission sites to the execution sites for the executor service JDK API that is used by most asynchronous frameworks. Request tracking can be activated by clicking on the signpost icon in the status bar. For this run configuration, I have already activated executor tracking. The setting is persistent across profiling sessions. There are other tracking types for situations where the executor service API is not used, for example, for the EDT dispatch mechanisms in common UI frameworks. Let's make some more requests in the browser. The last request had a lot larger output and its processing duration should be a lot longer. Let's check the profiling results. We can see that the three requests all took a similar amount of time on the request handler thread. In the executor threads, all requests are combined into a single tree and we cannot see if one request took longer than the others. To check which threads are involved, the show threads action comes in handy. These are the executor threads and these are the netty request handler threads. Both are different sets of threads. With the inline async executions call tree analysis, you can follow tasks across thread boundaries. JProfila suggests using it in various places. First at the top of the view and then on each node where such an async execution has taken place. They all do the same thing. In general, call tree analyses are invoked from the Analyze Toolbar button. 
Let's try this out. A new view is generated below the call tree view. This is not the live call tree, but a static analysis. Its only top-level node is now from the request handlers, and below that are the URL nodes, still with the same times. In each of the URL nodes there is an async execution node that contains the call tree with the workload. The async nodes all have very different times and the node for the word universe has the largest time by far. However, these times are not added to the parent node by default. If you want to do that, click on the checkbox at the top of the view. Now the large differences in the execution times for the different words are visually displayed on the URL nodes themselves. As you can see, the ability to inline async executions is an invaluable tool when working with applications where workloads are spread across multiple threads.